Hi, welcome to Spring MVC tutorial series. This video is about Spring and Hibernate integrations with my SQL. So let's get started. So for that we need to create a Spring MVC project. Just create it. So I'm using STS to do that. So here we need to select the Spring MVC project and let's give a name for this. Spring Hibernate Integration. Okay, so let's create this project. Here we need to give the package name. Okay, click finish. In my last videos, last couple of videos, I have explained about this STS and where to download it and how the Spring MVC project complete flow so please go through that video first so it has created a Spring MVC project and we will be having the all the dependency for Spring MVC in pom.xml file so to configure the Spring Hibernate we have these steps so we need to first create project in STS that we done so we need to add the dependency into pom.xml file so we need to add mysql hibernate jpa dependencies into the pom.xml then we need to configure session factory transaction management entity mapping in hibernate configuration file and we need to create an entity class and then a session factory and we we, we can modify the default controller and there we can save the entity class okay so let's check the second step so second step we have to provide these dependencies into the pom.xml file so these are the all dependencies the first is spring core then spring expression spring bean context jdbc orm and hibernate core library okay so these are the all library that we need to configure into pom.xml file to for the spring hibernate integration so i will provide all these library in the description of the, this video okay so let's open the pom.xml file just copy paste this in the dependency section so this is the dependency section okay okay so now it will build the workspace so as you see in the web.xml file we have in the spring package we have root context.xml file so here we need to configure session factory so let's do that so for session factory we have these configurations here in the session factory we need to configure data source and session factory as well so this is the annotation session factory bean that spring provides okay and we need to provide the hibernate configuration so as you see here we are configuring hibernate dialect and all other properties and here I am also configuring the transaction manager okay so let's copy this and let's paste this here so this file will be loaded while the context is initialized so if we open the web.xml file so as you see here when the application when the tomcat deploy these applications the context will be spring context will be initialized and it will load this file and it will configure it will configure all these beans on the startup so we will be having session factory so session factory is the hibernate object which provide the sessions to uh, to for create update delete any entity to the database 
for this tutorial mysql is required so here i'm configuring data source so in the data source i'm configuring drive a class name url this is the mysql url here having the local host and port number and this is the database name that i have created in the mysql so i have a database in mysql okay let's check this so i have a test database in mysql so you need to download the mysql as well for this tutorial after that we need to create an entity class so let's do that okay so let's go to the main package here in the home controller we have a default controller here we can create an entity class okay let's create an entity class as say we have a entity as account So in this class we need to use entity annotation which will comes from Java dot persistence package and also we need to provide the table annotation. Let's create some columns here. So we need to use column annotation for that. Say so we have a column as count number okay and let's create one more column customer customer name for account number okay and we also need to create an ID so for that we need to use ID annotation and let's create a integer as an ID okay it should be ID okay so let's provide the setter and getter for this for all the properties of the class okay so we have created the entity class now let's create a service class see we have a account service in the account service just annotate this with service annotation to create the object of this service class okay here we can auto wire so we we have to use session factory to get the session and to perform any hibernate operations okay so let's import the package as well okay so let's create a method to set the account save accounts Okay, let's keep the return type and here pass the account number okay and let's use the session dot open session dot save or update we can use for this so it it will save this entity into the database okay so if we see the configurations uh, hibernate hbm to ddl this is set to create this will create the table into the database for account entity okay let's set the id as a auto generated so this will automatically generate the new sequence for this id okay so in this controller we can create the instance of service class so can use auto wide for that so auto wide will create the 
account service object okay so let's create instance here account service and in this default controller we can create a account object account equal to new account okay and let's set the values for the account so let's set the account number set it 100 let's set the customer name and we can use account service to save this object into the database so we have a save account function that we have created let's call this function okay so let's check out the all the steps so we have created a spring mbc project we have added a dependency we have configured the hibernate configurations and we have also created the entity session factory the configurations once again so this we need to modify so we don't have employee entity we have account entity so we can move this account entity into different package okay let's create a package as domain and let's move this to domain okay click ok okay so let's run this okay the spring context is initialized yeah so as you see we it has created a account table and it has inserted a value into the account table so if we go to our database so select star from account yep so we have a table account here we have account ID as 100 the values that we have provided into the controller so here can match the values yes so these are the steps to configure spring hibernate and we can configure hibernate with spring mbc and all db operation will be handled by the hibernate okay so it will make application more robust uh, if we use hibernate for the db operation and spring mbc only for the business logic and controller handling okay so that's all for this video in my next video i will discuss other important concept of spring mbc see you in the next video bye bye